Good afternoon, radio audience, and again, we want to thank you for tuning in to the Unadulterated Truth Broadcast. This broadcast is a live Bible question answer program with you, the radio listeners, at any point in time during this half hour broadcast. As always, you have the opportunity to pick up your phone, dial the number 281 837 2222 if you have any Bible questions or comments you'd like to make, and we will give you book, chapter, verse for all of your Bible questions. We'd love to listen to your comments as well. We're going to deal with the subject this afternoon entitled, Are You Listening to the Answer Given to Your Question? Are you listening to the answer given to your, to your question? In the Gospel of Mark, chapter 4, verse number 21, the Bible says, And he said unto them, Is a candle brought to be put under a bushel or under a bed, and not to be set on a candlestick? For there is nothing here which shall not be, made, be manifested. Neither was anything kept secret, but that it should come abroad. If any man have ears to hear, let him hear. And he said unto them, Take heed what you hear. With what measure you meet, it shall be measured to you again. And unto you that hear, shall more be given. For he that hath, to him shall be given. And he that hath not, from him shall be taken even that which he hath. Are you listening to the answers given to your questions this time? Again, 281-837-2222 is the number to call. And Brother Ozan is at this time going to lay a foundation. Brother Stephen Ozan. Thank you, Henry. Welcome, audience. Uh, audience, we're going to be dealing with this maybe for a couple of lessons. And we want you to really be paying attention to the title. Uh, are you listening to the answer that was given with Matthew 22, 15 through 48? Uh, there are some questions that are posed to Christ here in these texts. Several questions. And we want to validate to you how he answers these questions. We want to show you why he answers these questions. Mm -hmm. And you're going to be encouraged to hold the teachers you're involved with accountable and hold yourself accountable for how you answer the questions. You have some shows with some great names to them. Even this one, Unadulterated Truth, uh, you have gospel television network and things of that nature. Just ask the Bible or the Bible on all types of nice names, and they all use Bibles. But you have to understand something is that you should be listening. I want to read for you mm -hmm. Jeremiah 3 and 12. You should be listening to what's being said to you. This is what God tells Jeremiah is going to happen with his people. Go and proclaim these words toward the north. Jeremiah 3.12, and say, Return thou backsliding Israel. This is God's mentality toward his children when they've left. And I'm reaching out to the church of Christ members as well. Said the Lord, and I will not cause mine anger to fall upon you. For I'm merciful with the Lord, said the Lord, I'm merciful. And I will not keep anger for heaven. I only acknowledge, verse 13, thy iniquity, that thou hast transgressed against the Lord thy God. I want you to understand this is how you come back to God. Now listen to what's being said by your father. And has scattered thy ways to the strangers under every green tree. These are very grievous sins, idolatry. And you have not obeyed my voice, said the Lord. In addition, you not obeying the statutes. Verse 14, turn for backsliding Israel or backsliding children, said the Lord. I'm married unto you. Listen to this. And I will take you, one of a city. God doesn't care if only one comes out the whole city. Two of a family. Two is fine. And I will bring you to Zion. Now, that's his kingdom. That's his church. And I will give you pastors. Listen to this. According to mine heart. I want you to listen to this part. Which shall feed you with knowledge and understanding. Listen, audience. People like you and me, we ask questions because we seek answers. Truthful, please listen to what I say. Spiritual teachers and students of the Bible know when a question has not been answered. I want to make sure you understand that. Truthful spiritual teachers and students of the Bible know when a question has not been answered. Your question about the Bible must be answered by God and not man. Amen. It must be read. Anything less is error. Audience, 
And we've had this type of talk with you before. Members of the church, people around the world, you deserve teachers who have a heart like God. You should accept nothing less than teachers that have a heart like God. Anything less will cause you to be unprofitable spiritually. Same Jeremiah was told to tell people these false teachers will not profit these people at all. And these were Jewish teachers. These weren't foreign teachers. And we're reaching out to the churches of Christ as well. You have many teachers. They give you answers. They challenge you with statements. I'm surprised that you would even ask a question like that. Do you, do you understand the tactic audience? Listen to me, I beg you. That is a taught process by many ungodly so-called Christian schools with their psychiatric courses that they teach to cause you to manipulate people's minds. See, see, I'm challenging your spirituality by saying I'm surprised you'd even ask something like that. See, now you are already diminished as somewhat of an imbecile in your mind. You've received that from me. Why would it matter of any question you would ask? If you ask a question and call this program, is there really a God? Why would we go, I'm surprised you would ask such a thing. It's a question. You're obviously struggling with something. You deserve better teachers than that in your life. Amen. You need to surround your walk with people of God who have your best interest at heart, the salvation of your soul. Not to have you as a member listening to their radio program, giving some like on their programs so they can be popular, being one of their friends, friended on Facebook. You need someone to teach you the answer as they read it, whereby you are lifted up and matured and not diminished as some child. You deserve an answer that God has given, or else you've just said your soul isn't even worth that. But God in heaven is angry at you and them because he knows that soul is valuable. You listen to a lot of them because your parents told you. Some of you have parents who are teachers of the gospel, and they don't know what they're saying, but you listen because that's mom or that's dad. Don't you know your soul will stand before the Lord by itself, not with your family? So we want to encourage you to listen to this program. These men that are with me on this program are much more skilled than can handle these subjects with ease. But we want to share with you why did Jesus give these specific answers. And as each of us speak, we may chime in and give other supportive scriptures to show where that statement comes from. Because Christ expects people to know in Matthew 22, 15 to 48, where those answers are, and that's why he gives those answers based upon that. You don't need teachers down-talking you, uh, acting like you're some type of a beast because you don't have a Bible answer. When you ask your question, though, at the same time, you must accept if it was read, that is the answer. So the number to call is 281-837-2222. So at this particular time, my brothers have one of the specific questions that was presented to Jesus uh, and they're hard to address and show why he gave those answers. We'll allow that to happen at this time. Okay, I want to thank Brother Ozan. Again, the number is 281-837-2222. If you would, go ahead and turn in your Bibles, uh, as he mentioned, to Matthew chapter 22. Uh, Matthew chapter 22, and uh, we'll commence the reading, if we could, at verse number uh, verse number 15. We'll, we'll start... We'll start with that one, and uh, I want you to notice here in Matthew 22 and verse 15, and we'll read through 22, that you always had individuals, religious folk, Pharisees, Herodians, are always trying to trap Jesus. But notice how Jesus handles, handles them in verse 15. Then went the Pharisees and took counsel how they might entangle him in his talk. And they sent out unto him their disciples with the Herodians, saying, Master, we know that you are true, uh, you are true, and teaches the way of God in truth, 
Neither carest thou for any man, for thou regardest not the person of men. Now notice, I want you to notice earlier, they're trying to trap him and tangle him uh, and try to catch Jesus in something. And so the disciples here come with the Herodians, uh, uh, those uh, of the, of the, the uh, Herod that follow uh, Herod's teaching and, and, and the likes of Herod to try to catch Jesus uh, and trap him, pretend as though uh, they really are sincere uh, in what they're about to do. Uh, but we, of course, know that Jesus knows the hearts of all men. So what they're going to do is they're going to ask him questions. Nothing wrong with asking questions. Nothing wrong at all. And Jesus knows if you're asking and your motives are right. But anyway, verse 17, he said, they say, tell us, therefore, what thinkest thou? Like they really care what he thinks. Is it lawful to give tribute unto Caesar or not? Now, do you notice the question they ask? The Herodians ask, is it lawful to give money to Caesar or not? Again, trying to put Jesus in a political dilemma between the government and between spirituality. That's what they're trying to do. But Jesus, oh, I love him. Jesus perceived their wickedness and said, why tempt you me, you hypocrites? And so what does Jesus do? He says, show me the tribute money. And they brought unto him a penny. And he said unto them, who is, the, who is this image? And subscription. So Jesus turns around and asks them a question. So he he pulls out money and show me the money. Whose picture is on this money? They say unto him, Caesar, verse 21. Then said he unto them, get this, render therefore unto Caesar the things which are Caesar's, and unto God the things uh, that are God. And then he says, when they had heard these words, now get this, they marveled and left him <laughs> and went their way. Mm -hmm. Now I want to make sure you understand what Jesus has done here. Even though they tried to trap him and, and trick him, Christianity has never been a thing. And Jesus never did come to try to put his people against, uh, uh, against the government uh, of the land. Those of us who are Christians, we are to obey the laws of the land. Now, notice he showed them uh, some tribute money. Now, understand, under the law, the only tax that the Jews, when you go back to the law of Moses, were commanded to pay were the temple tax as far as it, it relates to God. But mm -hmm. remember, we are also citizens of the land. And so we are to obey, because I want you to get this, because government was set up by God. God is always expected his people, those of us who are Christians, members of the church, to obey the laws of the land. So he said, whose inscription is on there? And he said, well, it's Caesar's. Jesus said, well, render to Caesar uh, the things which are Caesar's, and then render to God the things uh, that are God. Now, uh, and then when they heard this, it said they marveled, and they left him, and they went on, on their way. And so there should be no doubt uh, in our mind that as, as Christians, that we are to be obey the laws of the land as long as the laws of the land are not uh, demanding or commanding us to do things that violate God's that God's law. Just real quickly before we get to the next question, and maybe Brother Hosea has another thought on that, but I just want to remind you, for those who are listening, what the Apostle Paul said about government in Romans 13.1. I'm not going to read all this because we want to deal with more questions. But in Romans 13.1, Paul writes to Christians. He says, let every soul, he's writing to Christian, be subject unto the higher power. Why? For there is no power, get this, but of God. The powers that be, notice this, are ordained of God. Isn't that exactly what Jesus told Pilate? Pilate said, I have the power, Jesus, to release you or put you to death. Jesus tells Pilate, you have no power unless my father gave it to you. And so there is no government that is greater uh, than, than God. God allows every government uh, to be what it is on today. God is still ultimately in control. But those of us as Christians need to understand something, that we are to obey God and we are to obey the laws uh, of the land. 281-837-2222. Uh, Brother, you have something you want to add to yeah. that particular thought or uh, a, a question there well uh, that done, they ask David. Jesus here in this text? Well, Don, I just want to share with you what does he mean now by give to God what belongs to God. Look at Genesis 1. And Henry has done an excellent job in breaking down. Jesus gave the answer because of the fact is look what Genesis 1 says in verse 26. And God said, let us make man in our image. After our likeness, and let them have the meaning of the fish of the sea, of the fowl of the air, of the cow, and over all the earth, and over every creepy thing that creepeth upon the earth. So God created man in his own image. In the image of God created he him. Male and female created he them. So just as the money has Caesar's image, his superscription, and a portion to be given back because it's his, you belong to God. You're made in his image. You have his likeness. 
And so you owe God Amen. your service and your obedience. And what scripture tells us that? Look at Ecclesiastes, if you will. Chapter number 12. And see, you may have been thinking, oh, Christ just gave an answer, you know, on the fly. Because, you know, he's God. And who can, he's God's image. And who can dare challenge Jesus anyway? See, that's how you think. But see, that's also ignorant thinking. There's a purpose in the scriptures that they should already have. Ecclesiastes 12 and verse number 13 explains. Let us see the conclusion of the matter. Fear God and keep his commandments. For this is the whole duty of man. For God shall bring every work into judgment with every secret thing, whether it be good or whether it be evil. See, you don't understand. God has a system that you should already know the answer. To. They should have known. Of course we're going to give taxes to Caesar. When Israel was first being taken over, the beloved Judah, Jeremiah, told them to humble yourselves and it will be well with you if you should listen to this nation when they come in. But if you rebel, it will not go well for you. They were supposed every since the very first nation, the gold head took them over, they were supposed to pay the taxes that were required. And they should have known that. And see, what you're not understanding is when a brother or sister gives an answer, they are supposed to validate. As Henry explained to you why Christ gave those answers, you're supposed to do the same when you give answers. And we're going to come back with some very deep questions. And we're going to call out some names of some folks who have posted answers on the Internet that if you would have just listened to it, you would have known they didn't even give a scripture. And that's not even in the Bible. Mm. And see, that's what we're trying to drive your mind away from. So the number to call is 281-837-2222. And so now we have another one which we, we can look at and uh, address concerning the thoughts of the poor deceived hearts of the Pharisees. And you're looking at Matthew 22, beginning at verse 23. And now look at this now. We want to post this thought and then let these brothers deal with this some more. Now listen to the mentality here. See, you think that they're just guessing. They know what they're doing. They have erred and not knowing the scriptures, as many of us, and they have erred and not knowing the power of God. Matthew 22 and 23. The same day came to him the Sadducees, which say that there is no resurrection, and asked him, saying, Master, Moses said, If a man die having no children, his brother shall marry his wife and raise up seed to his brother. Okay? Find that around Deuteronomy 25, around verse 5. Now there were with us seven brethren. This is not a lie. This is true. And the first, when he had married a wife, deceased, and having no issue, he had no child, left his wife unto his brother. Likewise, the second, a third, unto the seventh. And last of all, the woman died also. Therefore, in the resurrection, whose wife shall she be of the seven? For they all had her. Look at Jesus' response, verse 29. Jesus answered and said to them, you do err. Now watch this. Not knowing the scriptures. Whose fault is that? Yeah. Theirs. So you should have studied for you asked them that. Nor the power of God. Whose fault is that? Theirs. Verse 30, from the resurrection, they neither marry nor are given in marriage. But as the angels of God in heaven. But guess what? They don't believe in angels either. You see what's blocking the Sadducees? They do not believe in angels. They do not believe in spirits. And they do not believe in the resurrection. You'll find that in Acts 23 and 8. So now you've got to understand when you are asking questions to us and other people of God, there are certain blocks you have in your mind already. Yeah. That's a certain belief system you don't have. And you should. And that's why yeah. when you hear us answer the question, you get irate and hang up on it. But that's your fault if you don't believe in an angel, a spirit, a resurrection. Because they're all talked about in the Old Testament. And see, in your mind, you're thinking this is a new doctrine. It is as old as a life that there is angels, resurrection, and that there are spirits. And that's their fault. They disbelieve the scriptures. You're thinking of some unlearned teacher taught you they didn't know. They did know. But as touching the resurrection of the dead, have you not read? Now listen what he said. Audience, I beg you. It's in the book. And we're going to talk about it some more. Hey, we got a question pending. Hold on, hold on. Hold on. But he says, read. They would have had to read that answer already. That which was spoken unto you by God, saying, I am the God of Abraham, 
the God of Isaac, but the God of Jacob. God is not the God of the dead, but the living. Look at that response, verse 33. And the multitude heard this. They were astonished at his talk. But it's in the book. You know why? I read it like many of you, but I don't believe that. Mm -hmm. So I'm going to ask Jesus a bogus, erroneous question. Because I've got blinders on. Because I don't believe what he's already written at the hand of the gospel writers like Isaiah. Those that wrote the good news of their day. And they didn't believe it. So now we got a caller hanging on. We're going to take that call now and see what their thoughts are. Amen. Oh, they hung up. Right okay, the caller, the caller, you can call back. You can call back again. So now, look at this thought here that's before us. Now, understand something. Their blockage of belief is based on disbelief of red scriptures. Listen, marriage is of the earth. Amen. It is not of heaven, nor was it ever given to beings of heaven. It is of the earth. How do we know? Look at Genesis chapter 2. And we're going to drop another bomb about who can get married too. Amen. Genesis 2 and 23. Adam said, this is not bone of my bones. Fetch my flesh. She shall be called woman because she has taken out of man. Look what he says. Therefore shall a man leave his father and his mother and shall cleave unto his wife. And they shall be one flesh. Did you see that? He didn't say a man shall leave his father and mother and cleave unto his man. Why? Because we already read for you. He made the male and female. See, what you're dealing with in life is you're dealing with a group of individuals who are denying what they can see even in a mirror, that they look like a man or a woman. And they're denying that. And they're throwing an argument at you. What about hermaphrodite? Do you know, do you know the small percentage of people on the earth who are born with disfigurements of genitals and of their breasts, that it is so small, it is ridiculous to even bring it up, since how you can look in the mirror and yours are well defined. See, you let them give you that argument. You let them give the argument. What if a man is castrated? A woman has a mastectomy. Is she still a woman? See, you let them give you that argument. But the people who are leaning toward homosexuality, their bodies are well defined at birth. But you don't even ask them. You know why? Because you let them down talk you into a very small, very small group of individuals born on the earth with genitals that have some deformity. Very small. But it isn't the genital that makes you a man or woman. It's the spirit within you. Amen. And God would have to be an ignoramus. And I can say it without flinching because I know he's not. To put a woman's spirit in a man's body. Mm -hmm. See, he is the God of all knowledge and wisdom. That would not happen. But when they tell you that, I feel like a man and a woman. You know why you buy into it? Because you're wicked too. Because you know if I let this sin go, I can pull off some of mine. And you may be mad at me, but I know why you're accepting it. Because this group of Sadducees have denied spirit, angel, and the resurrection, and therefore they bring Jesus this bogus argument of who will she be married to in the resurrection? But I can tell you for a surety, Christ is clear in the book of Job, we get changed. They already should. You know, Job is already written. Look at Job 14. Look at Job 14. See, you might be wondering why Jesus gave that answer. Jesus knows about Job. Jesus talks about Job. Jesus knows about Job. 40. He knows they may not have numbers on it, but he already knows because he is the author, because he is the inspirer along with the Holy Spirit, along with God. They work together, Job 14, to tell man what to write. Look at verse 4. Who can bring a clean thing out of an unclean? Not one. You know why this is written? This is the Old Testament. Listen to it. Seeing his days are determined, the number of his months are with thee. Thou hast appointed his bond that he cannot pass. That's God. He says, you, you can't go past the number of days I give you. Turn from him that he may rest, till he sh shall accomplish an hiring in his day. For there is hope of a tree if it be cut down. Look at this, somebody dead, that it will sprout again. The tender branch, therefore, will not cease. See, this is how you answer a question. Jesus knows, they already know, they just don't believe it. Though the root, they have wax hole in the earth, and the stock, they have died. And God, I told you it's about death. Yet through the sin of water, it will bud. What is water? Spirit. 
Didn't Jesus say that's what he refers to, living waters, John 7? You remember that? Why does Joel pick water? Because it's connected. The Spirit will raise you up. It's saying this tree, the scent, just the scent of the water, the bud, the bud, and bring forth bowls like a plant. I thought it was dead. Listen. But man died and wasted away. Yea, man give it up the ghost. And where is he? They've read this. As the waters fall from the sea, and the flood decayed and dried up, so man lied down and rise it not. When? Till the heavens be no more. Did you see that? Wow. Now why do they believe not? In the words, I told you they read it and did not. Now you saw they're liars. Did and the same people talking to you are the same. They shall not awake, nor be raised out of their sleep. He said, till when? That will be no more. Oh, that thou wouldest hide me in the grave. Listen to what he's going to say. That thou wouldest keep me secret until thy wrath be passed. That thou wouldest appoint me a set time. Remember me. If a man thou shall he live again, listen. All the days of my appointed time will I wait till my change come. That's the text. When they read that, they said, there's no resurrection. Just like you, when we tell you you got to be baptized, be saved. Some of you say, you got to be baptized, be saved. You're just like the Sadducees. Mm -hmm. See, that's why Christ says, you do greatly err. Do you understand what we're dealing with here? You have to understand what it also he said. He said he's the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. What is so unique about Abraham Isaac and Jacob. That's the same thing he told Moses in Exodus 3, 14 to 50. He's telling him they are alive. Why? Because they are alive with life. Because they died with belief in their heart. And that's life giving. Faith in Almighty God. And that's what makes you alive. Now I'm going to stop now. Number call 281. Eight three seven twenty two twenty two. Wonderful, have... wonderful explanation. And then ready to listen. As he mentioned, the next couple of weeks we're going to be dealing with this, and we're going to make sure you all understand the reason uh, this is an important subject. You need to understand that the scriptures cannot be broken, and many of even our own brethren do not know how to counsel. They are carnal minded, even on this subject of marriage. But we want you to understand that when Jesus gave an answer to these questions that was posed to him, he was giving answers that they should have known when they read the scriptures. The answers that we give will be answers that come from God, that you can read. Not your feelings, not like brothers, not what your mama, your daddy taught you, not what your reverend taught you. Can you read your answer, and does your answer harmonize with other scriptures? Our brother, even that teaching on marriage, remarriage, and divorce, they have Jesus conflicting what Paul has said, as if Paul and Jesus are teaching different things. Why? Because we have brethren in the church who are yet to understand the spirituality of the scriptures. Real quickly before we close, here's what I want to get us to see. John chapter 10, the Bible said, now they were going to kill Jesus for this. Then the Jews took up stones again to stone him. Jesus answered them, many good works have I showed from you, my father, from which of these works do you stone me? The Jews answered him, saying, for a good work we stone you not, but for blasphemy. And because you, being a man, you make yourself God. They don't understand the scripture. Jesus answered him, is it not written in your law? I said... You are God? See, they should have known the law. Amen. If he called them God, unto whom the world, word of God came, and the scriptures, get this, verse 35, Gen 10, 35, cannot be broken, say of him who the Father that sanctified and sent into the world, thou blaspheme him, because I said I'm the Son of God. If I do not the works of my Father, he said, believe me not. But Jesus did the work of his Father. We want to be the faithful saints of God with Romans 16, 16, the Church of Christ salutes you. Brother don't know how to counsel, no, brother. Man. I'm telling you, and it's a tactic of the devil. You know, again, like we already talked about before in Matthew chapter 4, the devil come up with scriptures to try to get Jesus in Matthew 4 to do what he wants him to do. Mm -hmm. He takes God's word uh, out of context mm -hmm. to try to, again, make Jesus do something that, that, that the God didn't want him to do. But yeah. Jesus tells him, like we said, it is written again. Exactly. You know, and that's what these brothers again, are yeah. how to harmonize, how to harmonize the scriptures. Right? Exactly. And see, we're giving Philippians 3.21. See, they had Job 14, which gives, Job breaks down a detailed line by line of they should know that you're going to get resurrected. That's the term you use, I'm going to live again. And then he said, I'm going to get changed. But look at Philippians 3, 21. He says, we shall change our vile body 
that they may be fashioned like unto his glorious body. Mm -hmm. According to the working whereby he is able, even to do all things to himself. As he same power uses to do all things himself, he's gonna use he's gonna give us a body like his body. Mm -hmm. That's why Job begins to say there'll be a change. Now those guys, Sadducees, read that and they decided. We're not going to believe that. That's that right. When you read that, man, that's that's clear understanding. Amen. And when you look at ours in Philippians that he gave us, emphasizing in even more detail, everybody's supposed to be on the same page. They read that, and brother, this is why you know people's heart is not right. There's nowhere you can read Job 14 and think that there will not be a resurrection. Amen. That's an impossible conclusion you can come to. Unless you don't believe. Unless you don't that's believe. Sad. And see, and see that. But the and these are the priests. The Sadducees are the priests. Right. The priests is can you believe that the priesthood that does not believe in the resurrection? They do not believe in angels or spirit. And you see all three mentioned in the Old Testament. You know, that's a sin and a shame mm -hmm. to do that. But the idea is that they're still going. But see, just because they were priests don't mean they were going to be saved. Mm -hmm. Just like you got preachers. Just these guys are giving these answers. Like you talk about these guys giving these yeah, answers. We're gonna talk about more. That doesn't mean they're gonna be saved because they're giving some answers right and some wrong. Because the Sadducees, the Lord says, they cannot be saved. Mm -hmm. They cannot be saved in that state. Well, why still let them be priests? Because you're doing that part right. You're teaching, you're dipping people in water, but you're not getting in heaven. And everybody that buys them, that believes in that you're saved, about people cannot be married again. All these, you can, some of them teach you can give tithes and all that. They're not going to be rescued. And then when you look at all the countless times that Spirit is mentioned in the Old Testament, all yes. the angels that are in the Old Testament right. that are mentioned, an and they didn't believe in it. Right. You know, yes. And the time Deuteronomy 24 talks about divorce you know, concerning yes. the woman right. and how she can be forgiven right. and also walk according to Moses' law, That's but right. they don't see it. In the New Testament today. Amen. Amen. Well said, Amen. brother. Praise Amen. God. Amen. Bless you. Yeah. Amen. That's exactly. You know, and so, you know, when you look at this, brothers, you know, like I say, you know, God is good. You know, we'll, we'll have more information tomorrow. I mean, next Lord's Day uh, on this God let us live. But the idea is that Christ answers my point, and the point we're making is they are validated by scriptures. When an individual says that, this is one of the things those guys on um, that, uh, Particular program we'll be talking about says, in God's eyesight, you're still married to the other person. <laughs> See, now at that point, we just simply go, okay, now where are you reading that Amen. from? Amen. That's it. Do. It doesn't have to be those exact, because Job doesn't say, there is a resurrection. He expresses, you'll live again. I'm going to get a change. Like the tree, it dies and then it comes back because people don't realize that sin of water. And the spirit is the sin of all. The spirit is a full one that will lift us up mm. by the spirit. That's what lifted up Christ. He was lifted up by the spirit. And so the idea we have to stop now and ex express in our heart what scriptures are you reading, what verses that lead us to believe in God's mind you're still married. See, that's, that's what we have to say. Because you know what the answer God gave is not that. God said, as long as the husband's living or the wife, you're an adulterer. He didn't say you're still married. See, it's like, now we can read why he says you're an adulterer. Right. He says, because they're still living. Did you notice he never said you're still married to them? So see, now you have a Sadducee mentality. I'm going to make up a scripture, and I'm going to lie on the one that isn't a Bible. And then I'm going to teach that. And that's what I do. Now, 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 if he say, well, the Lord says you're an adulterer because your husband says, okay, that's true. But am I married to the next person? See, he can't teach it like that because when he reaches for truth, it says, yeah, well, you're an adulterer because they're still living. Because that's the law. But I gave you mercy. So though they're still living, I'm going to give you mercy that you can marry. No. They can't accept that. Mm -mm. Because they want to think that every marriage can be reconciled. Mm. See, and that's the problem. That's the New Testament to reconcile, but every there's no text that says every marriage can be reconciled. There is a text that says if you burn, marry. That's right. Now, see, what do we do with that text? 
See, this is the see. This is why I want to read that Job 14. The Sadducees knew that, but they refused to believe that. Just like Brother Freer said, they have many scriptures that use the word angel. Mm -hmm. Many scriptures that use the word spirit. They looked at those and said no, because here's my thought: Who will be married to who in heaven? See, because I have a separate belief. Right. That people do get married, our marriages will be retained from earth to heaven. Then I can't possibly believe this stuff about angels and what Joe man. I don't know what Joe's talking about. No man know, but God, he'll say it when he returns. <laughs> Stupid stuff like that, but that's okay. We know one thing: if you can read it, you better believe it, man. Amen.